Hello everyone, my name is Mr. New Jersey and welcome to my channel. Now in this video we are back with another tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at how to set up a ballast system on your ship here in Stormworks. I'm going to be going over two different methods that you can do to get an automatic ballast system in your own creation. But before we get started, if you are enjoying these videos, hit that like and subscribe button and don't click the little bell icon to be notified for my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. And while you're watching, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and what else you'd like to see in any of my future videos. So with that all said, let's get straight into it and get started with this tutorial. So getting started with this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how you can add a ballast system to your ship or whatever it needs to be to obviously either go and stabilize it or to go and bring it up or down to a certain level that you want. Now, there's different ways of doing ballast systems and also stabilization systems. You know, the most common ones you'll see is either using weights on rails. Um, this is a very popular one. I have a tutorial on this. The other one is to use fin rudders while you're actually moving. The creation, once again, I've got a tutorial on that. And then the third way you can do is use the actual ballast system, which will be using uh, water and pumps to actually ballast um, and actually weigh the, the boat down on different sides. Now, we're going to be focusing on the ballast system in this tutorial, and there's different ways you can do it. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can achieve it in your own creation, depending on what you want. As I said, I usually recommend that you use ballast systems on your larger ships. Um, that's just my personal opinion. But once again, it's up to you and it will change depending on your own creation, whether the size, the shape, what you have on it, etc, etc, etc. So you might need to adjust this accordingly. But we're going to cover the very basics of how to make a ballast system in this tutorial right now. So we're going to start with a basic one. The very first one that you can ever create is one where you can get the ship to actually stay level. Now you can see on the ship here, this is perfectly level. I'm really happy with this. It's nice and it's nice and flat and so on and so forth. So I don't have any issues. But let's imagine that on this ship, I had some extra things on the left hand side or I had some crane maybe on the left hand side, whatever it needs to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the side and I'm going to add some weight in. Okay, of course, to do that, I'm just going to disable the mirroring and I'm going to add some simple weight blocks here. Okay. So you'll notice now if I spawn it in, it should be sitting a little bit to the left and you can obviously tell that straight away it is. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a ballast system to counter that weight and we're going to get it to work automatically. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously have your ballast tanks in the vessel. Now it's up to you on the size, okay, it's completely up to you on the size of what you want. For the purpose of this video right now, I'm just going to create two ballast tanks on either side. I'm going to make them quite large. So we're going to go, let's do from here and we'll bring it all the way down to let's do there and then we'll bring it over there. And then I'm going to go and enclose that. Yes, okay, so I have two ballast tanks on either side that we're going to be getting water into. The next thing we're going to want is obviously a way to pump water in and pump water out of this creation okay now there's once again different ways you could do this i'm personally just going to be using let's go with um two pumps and let's see so let's go and grab our two different pumps here so we'll go all the way down i'm going to be using the large fluid pumps for this video it's up to you once again on what size you want so i've got two of them here and they're both facing the same way and then what i'm going to do is in the center here i'm going to put a fluid port and then on the other side, I'm going to put a fluid port. And the reason why I have two pumps is one to pump in and one to pump out. And then it's going to come through here. We're going to get, let's do a, let's actually get a T piece going. So we'll do a T piece here. And then it's going to use the same fluid port to pump in and the same fluid port to pump out. You can do it separately, it's completely up to you, but this is a very basic system. So we've got one pump to pump in, one pump to pump out. So you can see this one is pumping fluid in, so it's going out of the creation, and this one is pumping out, so it's going from the water into the creation, okay? So pretty straightforward. Now, because we're in advanced mode, we need some batteries. So I'm gonna get just one battery over there for now, okay? The next thing is how are we gonna measure the ship is actually tilting? Well, what I like to do is I like to use a tilt sensor. 
Now, you can place this anywhere you want. Just remember the higher it is on the creation, the more tilt you're going to get, the more readout you're going to get. So what we're going to do is let's place it over here for now. Okay, just going to place it over here. That way it's going to measure the tilt. Okay, the next thing, how these tilt sensors work is when it feels that it's tilting, it's going to output a reading from either zero all the way to 0.25. Okay, and if it goes this way, it's going to go negative. And if it goes this way, it's going to go positive or this way. Sorry. Okay, it's going to give us a positive readout. So left negative, right positive. Pretty straightforward at the moment. Okay, you, if you want to, you could obviously go and get a readout. So I'm going to go a digital display. Let's put it here at the back because then I can just swim to it and I can see what it's happening. I'm going to put a digital display there. I'm going to connect this up to electricity and I'm going to connect that to my tilt sensor. Okay, let's go spawn that in and let's have a look at what it's tilting because it's still got the weight blocks on the left and you can see we have 0 0.2, 0 0.3, okay, or 0 0.03, okay, so we're getting a readout. As I said earlier, this only reads out to 0 0.25 maximum. So what I like to do is I like to use a function block to times it by four. That way it will send up to a whole number, okay, you don't have to do this, it's just an option. We're going to get a function block and we're going to do x times 4. Okay, so it's going to take the value we're bringing into it and it's going to times it by 4. So we're going to go from the tilt sensor into our function and then from our function to our digital display. If we spawn that in now, it should be taking that value and timesing it by 4. As you can see here, there we go. 0.12, etc, etc, etc. Okay, so that's a little bit of easier number to work with. Okay, once we have that easiest way and the most simplest way as it is different ways you can do this is to use threshold gates okay this is a very crude way of doing it what i like to do is i'll use four of them okay so you can see i've got four threshold gates and we're going to start with the left hand side one we're going to say if we're getting a tilt from 0 0.1 all the way up to one okay so that's if we're getting a tilt from our function block i'm just going to connect all these up if we're getting a tilt from 0.1 to 1 we are going to get the pump to go and turn on so which pump do we need to turn on well we know that if it's negative it's leaning to the left and if it's positive it's leaning to the right okay so at the moment it's giving us a negative value okay so we can go and connect the pumps up so this one is going to be our positive and this one will be our negative. So negative 0 0.1 and negative 1. Okay, so we've got those two connected up. If you want, you can actually put negative 1 here and then negative 0 0.1 here because in theory that is the higher number. Okay, so if it's getting a negative, we want the pump on the right to fill up. If it's getting a so in the positive, it's filling the one on, so if it's getting a negative, which is this one, it's filling the one on the right. If it's getting a positive number, it's gonna be filling the one on the left-hand side, okay? Pretty straightforward. And what we can do is we can simply just take that once again, and we can go and connect that up to the opposite side. So if it's filling the right-hand side, we can empty the left-hand side. If we're filling up the left-hand side, we can empty the right-hand side. We actually don't need these threshold gates at the moment. We can get rid of those for now. Okay, so pretty straightforward, yeah? So it's going in from the tilt sensor. It's getting times by four. It's then going to our two threshold gates and saying, if it's positive, turn on one side. If it's negative, turn on the other side, okay? If you want to, you can also read out. So we can actually go and get a light switch here. You can see here, I'm just gonna get a light. I'm gonna get it on either side. So I'm going to say if the fill pump is on on the left, on the right, fill this one. If the fill pump is on on this side, fill this one, okay? So it's going to turn the lights on so we know it's working. We're going to connect all the batteries up and all the electrics, okay? And let's spawn this in. So you'll notice now once we've got that spawned in, okay, you can see there we go. It said, oh, this side is leaning too much to the left, so let's go and fill up the right-hand side. Okay, and it's going to continue doing that and continue doing it and continue doing it. Obviously, go and double check your settings. Okay, so remember the threshold gate, I use 0 0.1. You could change that to 0 0.01 and change that to 0 0.01. That will give you a more accurate reading. So let's go and look again. There we go. So now it's going to continue trying to fill the right hand side. 
and you should notice this is going to go down and down and down and down look at that oops there we go zero it's going to fill the left hand side a little bit and it's going to keep on doing that to get this as level as it possibly can now you can as i said change those threshold settings to give it get it more sensitive or less less sensitive it's completely up to you if you wanted to do that you could just go to the threshold gate and say okay instead of it being 0.01 i'm going to do 0.03 okay that way it's going to give it a little bit more wiggle room it's going to allow it to tilt ever so slightly but then it's not going to completely to keep on turning it on and off on and off on and off on and off okay so you can see now it's trying to push it to the right 0 0.9 0 0.8 0 0.5 0 0.3 boom and off yep now it's going to tilt to the right a little bit and it's stopping there Okay, it's now centered. That is 100% level, as you can see. Oops, there we go, now it's turned it back on again. It's pumping in, it's pumping out, and it's doing its own thing. Okay, really, really quite nice there. There's another way of doing this. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of all of the stuff that we actually don't need anymore. So I'm actually just gonna get rid of the tilt sensor, I'm gonna get rid of the lights, I'm gonna get rid of everything. Okay, so this is a different way. Now, the way that we're going to be looking at now is if you, I usually recommend this if you're using like a cargo ship or a fuel ship or a, like a, let's say an oil ship where you're constantly loading fuel in or loading cargo in. That way your ship is going to rise and sink depending on the load of cargo that you have. So obviously once you've loaded all that cargo off your ship is going to fly up into the air or it's going to raise quite a lot. So there would be a really nice way to actually get it to sit at a certain level. Okay so what I'm going to use I'm going to use an altimeter. Okay, so we're going to get an altimeter here. I'm going to put it on the left hand side. What we're going to say is that, that is our zero line. We always want it to be at that level. Now I want it on both sides of the ship. So I'm going to get two of them. Okay, so you can see one there and one there. Okay, so I got two altimeters. What we're going to do now is we're going to measure that altimeter and we're going to tell it to always be at zero. We always want that altimeter to be at zero. So how do you do that? Once again, we can use threshold gates and we're going to use four this time. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so you've got your thresholds there. We're gonna connect up our altimeter on the left-hand side to the two left threshold gates, the altimeter on the right-hand side to our two threshold gates. Okay, and we're then gonna go into the actual threshold gates and we're gonna do a very similar thing to what we've just done already with using the tilt sensor. So the altimeter we always want it to be at zero. So we're going to do 0, 0.0, let's do 0 0.01 and 1000. Okay. And we're going to do a negative 1000 and let's do negative 0 0.1. Do exactly the same on the other side. So 0 0.1 and let's do 1000. And then we're going to do a negative 1000 and negative 0 0.1, okay? So what we're going to do now, so we have positive, negative, positive, negative, okay? So what we're going to do is we're gonna say, okay, if this is too high, so positive number on this, okay, which is going to be this one here, positive number, we then want it to turn the pump on to fill that side, okay? If it's too low, we wanna turn the pump on to empty it. The same goes on the other side. If this is too high, we want the pump to turn on. And if it's too low, we want the pump to empty. Okay, pretty straightforward, okay? If you want to, you can also add some fluid sensors to see how much fluid is actually in these tanks. And what we're going to do just for purposes of this video is I'm gonna get some lights here and I'm gonna say, okay, this one is positive and that one is gonna be empty. Okay, so empty is gonna be those two. And the other one, so let's do green for empty, sorry, green for filling and red for emptying. Okay, that way we know which color is going on. We're gonna connect that up again. So positive is going to be to fill and negative is to empty and positive is to fill and negative is to empty. Connect up to some electricity, of course. Connect, connect, connect and spawn it in. We should now see Yep, there we go. So have a look. It's it's telling the system, oh, okay, so on the left-hand side, it's too full, okay? So it's trying to empty. And on the right-hand side, it's not full enough, so it's gonna try and fill it. So you can see there, currently, it thinks it's 100% level. It's good, 
Okay, so it's both of those altimeters are hitting the water. That one is a little bit too deep. Okay, so which means I'll probably remove some weight blocks from my ship. That's just my personal preference. Okay, so yeah, that system is working quite nicely. But the thing is, you can't actually control it manually. Obviously, this is going to go up and down as you add more cargo. So for example, let's go in the center here. I'm going to take, let's get rid of some weight blocks. How about that? Okay, so let's go and oops. Let's go and get rid of some weight blocks down the center of the ship. There we go. Some weight blocks have been removed, which means it's going to be much more buoyant. Okay. So you'll see here. Now it's going to try and fill them as much as it can. Okay. So you can see the right side's now filling, 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 filling. And it's going to try and stabilize itself. It's going to get that altimeter until it hits the water. Okay. There we go. Now it's filling the left hand side. It's going to try and do the same thing and so on and so forth. But as I said earlier, you can't manually adjust that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the weight blocks back. And now what I wanted to do is I wanted to tell it, okay, well, what happens when I want the water line to be here, for example, right here at the top, I wanted to sink more in the water. Well, you can do that by simply getting two add blocks. We're going to get an add and add. We're going to put it down here and we're going to use a keypad so we can manually tell it when we want it to be. Okay, because by default, it wants to be at zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our electric, connect it up obviously to our keypad. And then we're going to go and do is we're going to go from the altimeter into our plus, okay, to our add. We're going to add the keypad and we're going to go back to the threshold gates. The same goes for the other side. Altimeter to the add block, keypad to the add block, and then from the add to our threshold gates. Okay, this way I can manually input a number to adjust it. So we can spawn in again. By default, it always wants to be zero. So let's give it a few seconds for it just to adjust here. So you'll see it's going to try and push on the right hand side, try and fill it up until it get leveled. Yep, there we go. Okay, but I wanted to I wanted to go a little bit deeper into the water. Okay, so I'm going to go to the keypad and I'm going to tell the keypad actually I want you to be at two. What's going to happen is it's now going to fill the ship up until it goes two meters below the water. Okay, so can you see here? It's going to sink, it's going to keep on sinking, it's going to keep on sinking, and it's going to keep on filling those tanks up. Okay, until it sinks enough down in the water. Okay, and it will keep on doing that and doing that and doing that. The same goes as if it's too heavy, I can adjust this and I can say, actually, no, I only want it one meter below the water. Okay. And you can see now it's going to keep on sinking it and sinking it and sinking it until it thinks it's one meter below the water. You could even do 10. So it's just going to keep on sinking it until it's 10 meters below the water. Okay. This is another cool thing you could use for submarines. But once again, I'm not going into detail about that in this video. But there you have it. That's two different ways you can do ballast systems in your own ship. The first way we looked at was to just get it to stabilize the ship and the second way was to stabilize it and also to sink or raise it depending on what altitude or what height or meters you want the ship to be under the water. Okay, so two very nice, quick and easy ways to do this. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of this video, if you found it entertaining or helpful in any way. I know a lot of you have been asking in the comments for this video, so I thought we would go ahead and do this. And also if you would like maybe some advanced ways of how you can do balance system using PIDs and different kinds of things like that, let me know in the comments below. But I hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining as always, and we'll see you in the next one.